All right, thanks for watching. And today I want to prove that the function x cubed is continuous. So what we have to show is that f of x equals x cubed is continuous at every x naught for all x naught. Which just means the following, again, with the epsilon delta definition, for all epsilon positive, there is delta positive such that if x minus x naught is less than delta, then f of x minus f of x naught is less than epsilon. So no matter how small the error, there is some threshold such that if x is close enough to x naught, then f of x is close enough to f of x naught. And first step, remember as usual, you start with this equation and you try to find delta. So the finding Nemo of math. Find delta. All right, now f of x minus f of x naught. That's just x cubed minus x naught cubed. But remember, there's this beautiful identity that takes care of uh, the difference of cubes. And it just says that a cubed minus b cubed, that's a minus b, times a squared plus ab plus b squared. Right. And in particular, this identity becomes x minus x naught times x squared plus x x naught plus x naught squared. And well, we want this to be less than something, so um, let's just use the triangle inequality. So it's less than x minus x naught times, let's see, um, Absolute value of this, of x squared plus absolute value x, x naught plus absolute value of x naught squared, which we can just rewrite as follows. All right, and then this just becomes x minus x naught times absolute value of x squared plus absolute value of x, absolute value of x naught plus absolute value of x naught squared. Now, this x naught squared is good. It's constant. It's the other things that we have to worry about. And in particular, we would like to find a bound that doesn't depend on x. And for this, as usual, assume x is very close to x naught. So suppose x minus x naught is less than 1. Then we can estimate x. And by the way, remember this when we find our delta, then absolute value of x, that becomes absolute value of x minus x naught plus x naught, and that becomes less than or equal to x minus x naught plus absolute value of x naught, and that's less than 1 plus x naught. And that's very good because we can now plug this into this expression. So what do we get? we get, again, f of x minus f of x naught. Well, now, becomes less than or equal to x minus x naught. And the same expression, except you replace x with 1 plus x naught. So this becomes, again, quite a horrible expression, but 1 plus x naught squared plus um, 1 plus x naught times x naught plus x naught squared. Now, even though this looks horrible, this is very good because this is just constant. It does not depend on x. And in fact, in order to not write the same expression over and over again, let's write it as c. So this is x minus x naught times c. All right, so now we just need to let this to be less than epsilon, and therefore we get x minus x naught less than epsilon over c. And this is our delta, except remember, we also need it to be delta to be less than one, because we want x minus x naught to be less than one. That was one requirement here. So 
Now we can do our actual proof. So let epsilon be given and let delta to be the smaller one of uh, 1 and epsilon over c. Then Then if uh, x minus x naught is less than delta, then, well, let's calculate f of x minus f of x naught. Remember, we found at some point that it's x minus x naught times x squared plus x x naught plus x naught squared. And then by the triangle inequality, we get this is less than or equal to x x naught times absolute value of x squared plus absolute value of that stuff plus absolute value of that stuff. And then uh, remember by our constant or like by our assumption, this is less than or equal to x x naught times c. But now uh, x x naught is less than delta, this is less than epsilon over c. So you're left with less than epsilon over c times c, and I hope you see it, but the c's cancelled out and you get epsilon. So this is the satisfactory epsilon and therefore f is continuous at x naught. And since x naught was arbitrary, we do get that f is continuous. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.